All right, so today I'm working out of a, Viking, a piece for a Viking stove. They got broke. Uh, this is, I'm doing this for a friend of mine. And what happened was this valve here, you know, the, the gas goes through here. The, the, this valve stem, which is right here at the top, got broke. Now normally the valve stem is half round when it gets to that to point to where it goes to the knob. So, and then this part is round. So it was machined to have you know a flat end, and then, then the round part that goes to this. Uh, the uh, I'm trying to get this top part off. Okay, that's the, actually the housing for the for the stem itself that guides it into the the valve. You know where it adjusts the valve, and it you know like I said it got broke off. So uh, I have to take these screws out, this screw and this screw, but this screw got stripped. Uh, it was a Phillips head screw. It was really very, very tight, got stripped, and now I've got to, I'm gonna have to get it out another way. So for now, uh, and I'm too lazy to wanna use my drill press. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and set it into the vise that I have for the drill press. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm just gonna try to, uh, whoops, I'm just going to try to drill it out, drill out the head so I could at least take the part, the, uh, the housing in there apart. And then once I get the, once I get the head of the screw off of here, and it's just a small piece, you know, normally I, I do this with the drill press, like I said, so I could precision drill it, but it's not really super critical because I just got to destroy the head, get the get it to where the head comes off and then remove the piece and then I'll just unscrew the stud, replace that screw there. I've got a place that has precision, uh, you know, tiny jeweler size uh, screws. So just going to go ahead and try to get it there. I hope it's not hardened because then this might be a little bit long here. I don't know. It looks like it's pretty, pretty easy. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a brass screw probably. Yeah, actually, I don't think it was a brass screw. From the looks of it, just gonna get that out of there. Jeez, what a mess. Anyway, uh, so what I'm gonna do? I'll come back on camera once it's drilled out, and then I'll I'll take it apart, and then we'll kind of examine what's on the inside of one of these guys, and what I'm gonna have to do to fix it. Okay, so now I've drilled through. I've got the head of the screw off. I didn't want to drill too far because uh, I was afraid of, you know, digging deeper into the housing, and I really, really don't want to do that because it's a pressure point. So I got the head of the screw off, or well, actually, I got most of the head of the screw off. Now remember, uh, a drill has a taper to it, so I, I figured the the middle part's deeper, and then the ends are not as not as quite as deep. So I don't think I really dug into that. I, that that uh, the shreds right here. Are the actually the screw itself so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the other screw out so that I can I'm probably gonna have to uh, to use a little a little tiny bit of leverage to get it out because it didn't quite come all the way through so I've got this guy out here uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and leverage it out just ever so slightly and okay great we got it off okay so I think I could probably I could probably lift it it's actually spring loaded in there because it's a valve there it goes that was the rest of the head so you, as you can see here's the here's the piece here's the shaft that went down into there and turns and it actually turns the uh, the actual valve itself. So what I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to have to replace this shaft here, which grabs this piece and turns it. So uh, I'm going to see what I can do to get that done. And it looks like it has to be about that long. I'm going to measure it. And then the other part's going to be half round. It's going to be about that tall. So I'll, I'll come back on camera once I've figured out a fix. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to press this out or or what I'm going to have to do yet. I'm going to have to analyze it a little bit further. Okay, so now that I have uh, the piece off, okay, so what, I, what I've got left is 
I've got the bottom part, okay, which is actually the valve itself, not the knob, okay. And this spring is actually what pushes this knob up. So, you know, how when you start a stove, you have to push down and then turn. Well, that's the spring that actually pushes this, this valve up. It pushes it from underneath here. There's actually a channel here, which is in a lock position. If you can see, there's a little channel right here. This little arm reaches into the channel and it keeps it locked until you push it down and then you turn it. Now, there's a, there's a final lock here. That's, that's full uh, open, okay? And so, you know, obviously, this pushes down. It pushes on the spring. And then, you know, you push down and then it, it starts the stove. So once I got once I got this open, okay, I discovered that there's this actually should turn freely. And I discovered that this is this is biting in here because when this got damaged, it bent the rod. And it's not, it's not too hard too hard to do because that's a brass rod and the brass rod was probably about that long. So, you know, the leverage is going to cause it to bend. So that rod going into this part of the, into this body right here, okay, into this part of the valve body is not true. It's actually bent. So I'm going to end up probably having to push it up from underneath to get the rod out. Now, the rod is actually fit into a sleeve. As you can see here, there's a sleeve. Okay, it's actually a, a rod fitting into a hollow tube and very tight tolerance. So I'm going to have to measure that. And the, the way I figured that out was I, I, I just kind of took a ballpark measurement of what this size diameter of the rod is and what this size diameter rod is. And it turns out that this size diameter is bigger than this size. So I'm guessing that it's a piece of rod and I actually got a piece of rod to do this with, okay, that's brass. You have to do it with brass because, uh, you know, these parts are, uh, there, there's a certain, uh, there's a certain technique to building stoves that dictates that anything that touches gas is gonna be brass. And that's because brass is less susceptible to oxidation and corrosion because of, you know, the gas, gas tends to corrode any other metal, uh, lead, you know, uh, steel, whatever. Okay, so they use brass for the pieces. So I got this piece of brass. Okay, now what I'm going to have to do is I'm. Okay, so as I was saying, I had a call that came through and it interrupted my video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart and I'm likely going to have to press fit the center of this through the the you know the longer tube piece and i'm going to press it outwards because this is the side that got bent the top side so i'm going to have to take off this little micro switch first and then i'm going to i'm going to press fit that now uh to press it i'll probably use uh a a piece of maybe like billet material under here and then i'll probably put a socket you know, around that piece. And then that way it's going to allow me to press this through. And then I'll, I'll end up pressing it through with something else. It'll have to be about that gauge. So I'm going to have to probably uh, make something or, you know, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it just yet, but that's the plan. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out now. You know, this is, this is a, a piece of a stove that's probably 15 years old. So all of the material on the outside, you know, stuff is dripped on here. Um, you know, this stuff has basically been loctited just by food drippings, okay? So, uh, not quite that easy to get this little piece of hardware off of here to take the micro switch off. So, I'm just going to have to use a pair of channel locks and just lock on the edges there. And then just kind of twist it out. I need to be very careful because I don't want to damage the micro switch. See if I could grab it here. Okay, yeah, so you get the idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and twist it out. I'm going to take, that's going to enable me to take the micro switch off of that, uh, off of this part of the, <coughs> this is, this actually, I referred to this as a valve body earlier. This isn't a valve body. That's a valve body. But anyway, whatever this piece is, 
I'm going to take it off of here. I'm going to remove the white micro switch and then. Okay, so as I started to say before I was interrupted again, I'm going to take this, this micro switch off of here and then it's going to enable me to have this freed up so that I could press that, that piece through. It's going to take a little bit of force, so I'm probably going to use the, the uh, the vise that I use for my drill press, okay, machinist vise, and uh, now I've got this to where it, it's going to come off now, so let me just go ahead and get this off while I have you live on camera. Now this this uh, little screw here, I'm probably going to replace that with a fresh piece of hardware, just so that I don't have, uh, you know, dirty hardware on there when I put it back together. So yeah, the micro switch came off, and you know, the trick is to get it to where you don't crack the housing for the micro switch otherwise that thing's no good so I did that now I've got just a, a, a bare piece of whatever this part is I don't know what they would call that anyway you can kind of see that so now what I'm going to end up doing is uh, there's actually a little bit of this this piece is risen a little bit and then it's going to have to push through here so maybe I can get that with a socket I'll put a socket on here and then I might be able to press that somehow with a, with just a little, uh, I'm not, well, maybe not a socket, but I'll figure out something to press that with. So I'll come back on camera once I'm ready to do that. Okay, so after I struggled with it for a little while, what I did was I just put this in the vise, and then I pushed on the stub that was here. And as you, as you can see, now it's pushed it down into here, and then this is, this is actually coming out. So I'm going to be able to pull this out. Now, it appears that I'm going to have to be able to... I guess get it pressed out of the out of the sleeve that it's in because this little piece of metal here, the one that's going this way, is part of that metal. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge to reproduce that because uh, I want to be able to have it have the same feel once I put it together, you know, to where it's got the stops. Obviously, you need to have the stops there because that's you know that's the limit of what the valve is. I don't want the valve to get mashed, and I don't want somebody to have to guess where the beginning and end of that stroke is. So uh, that's going to take a little bit of brainstorming, but I, at least I've got it now to where this guy is ready to pull out of here. And I'm going to see if I can let's see if I can grab it here. Uh, probably going to have to get some needle nose here, but yeah, I'll get my needle nose pliers, and then I'll see if I can grab it live on camera. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, I did find something that was about that, that was smaller than that diameter, it's this guy right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap this through. It should be able to tap through very lightly because like I said, the spring is actually what keeps it up. So this actually should fall through na just naturally, you know, in its natural state. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap it. it should just fall right out. Okay, so it, now it's free of the piece. So what we have here is we have this little housing now that's actually free. And uh, I don't think there was any damage to it. It's hard to say if there was or if there wasn't. If there was, I mean, we're just going to have to live with it. This is the piece that came out. So that's the that's the bottom of it. And then here is the, uh, the shaft itself. Now, it does appear that the shaft is actually slightly larger than the stock that I have. Got a trade. Okay, so it does appear that the shaft, I've got to interrupt it again. It does appear that the shaft is slight, this piece right here is slightly larger than the shaft that I have. So I'm going to have to figure out another solution or maybe get some other uh, I'm going to measure that and figure out what that is. Oh, I know that's right. The reason for that is because it's in the it's in the sleeve. So, oh, maybe that's not what it is. I got to figure out how this is constructed. But well, once I do that, then I'll I'm going to have to try to reconstruct the other piece. So it looks like it's a little bit more complicated than it was. You know, what I thought it was going in. But I do have this piece out now, so at least I could, you know, start trying to hammer out a solution to getting a, a replicating a piece like this. It's going to have to be this piece plus a shaft that's going to be about that long, going through this piece here, and having that that pretty tight tolerance, you know. Uh, 
I guess it doesn't have to really, well, I, I do want it to match the size of this. Maybe I can uh, do something to where I have a, you know, where I fill this piece with another piece and drill it out. I'm not sure what I'm going to have to do there. So I'll brainstorm it, and then I'll just call it a day and, and then come back tomorrow and try to figure this out. So thanks for watching so far. Okay, so I have some uh, some unique issues that I'm going to have to figure out here, but I've got a, I've got you know the pieces that I need. Now I had some brass stock earlier that I was trying to compare the diameter of this to, and this this stock is actually closer. It's it's about fifteen thousandths of an inch too big, so I'm going to probably have to machine that on a lathe. I'm going to machine it up to this point. And the reason I chose to machine it was I could have bored this out and made it work, but this shaft is still going to be too big to fit into this half round here that you see on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine it down 15 thousandths of an inch so that when I do cut it half, that's going to be a unique challenge in, its, in itself. When I do cut it to half, it's going to fit in there. And uh, oh boy, that seems to be bigger than that. Anyway, uh, well, it's for a different stove. This, this is for my barbecue, so this is for a stove. So it's going to be half round for a Viking uh, handle, which is I, apparently slightly smaller than this. So, and then this, this one here, uh, this, this barbecue, uses hollow half rounds, so that's why this is a little bit bigger. I thought they were all the same, but I guess not. Anyway, so uh, uh, this is a roller bearing, okay, that I found in some of the stuff that I had and it's it's the same diameter as this but the unique thing about this is you see how there's a machine part here where this diameter of this is less than this well that's what I'm going to end up having to do to the piece that I replicate to do this because originally I thought that the that there was that this was a piece of brass in a sleeve but it's not it's a piece of brass that's machined down. And the reason it's machined down here, the reason there is a shoulder here, is because this has to fit, once it goes to the housing, it has to fit on top of this, and it pushes down. And that's how you get the action of, you know, the uh, the stove coming unlocked when you, know, when you turn it on. As all stoves do, they have a locked position so that they can't accidentally be turned on. So the locked position is actuated from this little stem right here, this guy right here, riding in a, I don't know if you can see that, but there's two depressions here. There's one here and one here. This is the off setting, okay, which actually the, the stem through, pushes through here. This is the off setting. Then this is the low setting here, and then it actually sweeps, as it clocks through, it sweeps all the way to the high setting, which is limited by this stop right here. You can see this little, this little piece right here that limits the movement of this as it clocks through. So, another thing, another aspect of this is that, okay, this actually fits on top of this, okay, and then you have your little, you know, you have your little uh, solenoid here, which is the uh, the spark actuator, okay. Um, the The way it works is, when this piece used to come through here, okay, it used to come right through there, just like that, okay. When it came through there, there was a stem, okay, and then this a, a knob fit on top of the stem, on top of the half round, so the knob. The stem was actually half round at the top to accommodate the knob, okay, and it was like this at the bottom. This is the, the part that's left, okay. Uh, my point is, is that I have to produce a piece that's going to be, uh, I don't have the actual pieces that they had with me, so I'm going to make it a little bit longer and let them trim it on their end, because they're all the way on the other side of the United States for me. But anyway, I'm going to half round this piece at the very top. It's going to have this little piece of this little metal piece pressed into it, okay? And it turns out that this is actually a press fit here. As you can see, this is brass, this is steel, this is press fit. Well, I actually had uh, 
there was a little bit of destruction there when I tried to push it through the other way. So it loosened this piece. This is a little piece of dowel here that's pressed into another piece of dowel, which is pretty tricky. So it's going to be kind of a trick for me because I'm going to have to actually drill into half round or drill into round stock the exact diameter of this dowel. This is going to have to go like this, okay? And then I'm going to have to cut, which is not going to be tricky. I'm going to have to cut a shoulder just like this, just like the shoulder you see here. I hope you can see that. I'm going to have to cut a shoulder just like that onto this piece. Okay, so it's going to have a shoulder. Then it's going to have the dowel piece, piece pressed right in. Okay, and then at the top, it's on the back side, it's going to have a flat. So this part's going to be, you know, this part, that side there is going to be half round, and then this part is going to be gone because it's going to be a flat. So it can press into a, a press into a knob just like that. So that's the plan. Uh, going to take me a little bit of doing. I'm going to have to do some lathe work. I'm going to try to get the diameter of this piece here smaller here at the bottom. So I'm going to go up to about where it was at the top of the stroke. So it looks like uh, it's probably about uh, anywhere from a half to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to, you know, lessen the diameter of this just ever so slightly. It's about 15 thousandths off. Then I'm going to lessen the diameter up here because it's actually got to fit into a half round piece up here. It'll be the same diameter at the top. It'll just be fatter in the middle. And the reason I ended up using aluminum stock was I could not find here in North America a piece of half round stock that was six millimeters in diameter. Now, I could find a piece, but uh, I kind of priced it out. It was going to be like $30, which is going to be ridiculous. 30 to 35 plus shipping, okay? Uh, and I just didn't want to go through all that. You know, this is kind of an experiment anyway. This is aluminum. The other piece is brass. The reason brass is used is because it's, uh, it's a lot less prone to oxidation. And, you know... It's just kind of one of those things. It's kind of a necessary evil. If I could have found the brass piece, I'd have done it. I'd have reproduced this out of brass. But, you know, I've got a few hours into this project already. I don't want to take up more time. I don't want to wait, wait another two weeks to get a piece of brass here and pay, you know, $40 for it after shipping to have it shipped here. So that's why I'm going to use aluminum stock. This costed me like, you know, two and a half bucks at the hardware store. I'm going to use aluminum stock. I'm going to replicate the piece that was in there. And I'm going to put it back together, and I'm going to just going to ship it off, you know, to the person that I'm trying to help out. So that's the plan. Okay, one of the things that I wanted to mention was, is if I had the measurement of this total shaft, which I don't, I'm, I'm hoping to get the, the measurement of the shaft from this point to the, from the top of this piece to the top of the shaft. I know which side has to be flat because I've done one of these stoves before. If I get that measurement, I can make a shaft the exact size. If not, I'm going to have to make it a little bit oversized and let them trim it on their end, which, you know, that could be a disaster. But, you know, that's, that's, it's not anything that I could help because I, it's just a limitation of getting to the piece and being able to work with it myself. I should have had them send me another piece just so I could work with a good one to see, do the comparisons between the one I'm building or the one I'm making and the one that's on there. Okay. Anyway, uh, this shaft here, since it fit up into here, okay, uh, it was broken off at the top, okay, and if I would have had more of this material above this housing and the shaft was bent, there's no way I would have been able to press it through there. So what I would have had to do was I would have had to take a bandsaw and just shut, lop it right off, right at the very top of this, and then press it through. Luckily, it broke clean off you know, right there, there wasn't anything that was bent really bad. I was slightly bent, but I was able to press it through without damaging this piece, okay? Now, the, the task that I have ahead of me now is to, you know, build a shaft like this. Now, I've got the diameter of the shaft, okay? I've got an idea of how long it has to be, but what, I, what the critical part right now that I need is, is how much of this shaft was actually below the top shoulder of this, okay? It fell, fell down in here, okay? And the way to get a clue of that is that there is a, 
the way to get my clue is that there's marks on here showing where this was because the, the clean brass is where it was in the housing the dirty brass is all the area above so remember that there's a little bit of a shoulder here this machine too and i'm gonna i'm gonna measure that shoulder so i can figure out how much to to machine down the other stock that i have is okay so it appears that it's about it went into that shaft about uh five 0.575 of an inch okay so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to machine a piece i'm going to machine the other rod 575 i'm going to go in 15 thousandths of an inch of a cut so that it's actually the exact uh, diameter of this shaft then i'm going to have to drill into the side of it so that i could press this piece in so it's going to be a little bit tricky uh, you know Machining it down is not going to be a problem. Drilling into the side of it is going to be a problem. And I'm going to have to figure out, I probably have to put, to make some kind of a jig to do that in order to, you know, to successfully drill it straight. Otherwise, I'm going to drill it crooked or, you know, it's, it's hard to drill into a round piece of material. I might even possibly flatten a piece and then press this in, but I really don't want to do that because there's a limited amount of length that this is pressed into that piece and I would like it to be the full length if possible, but... We'll see how that goes. So that's my next step here. So now what I have is I have the lathe set up with the piece. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it 15 thousandths of an inch that long. What was it? I said 0.575 I think is what it was. But to go that, that far into it, uh, you know, 575, there's going to be a shoulder here. And then there's actually going to be a little piece that I'm going to machine here, which is probably going to be, I would imagine, maybe 10 or 20 thousandths, just to give me the shoulder so that it fits into that spring that I was showing earlier. So that's the, uh, that's the next step. Okay, so I've got it chucked up into the, up into the uh, lathe now. So now I'm just going to go ahead and machine it here. I'm going to go in that way, 5.75, I've already got my scale set to zero. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, i got to go into where it just touches it. There it is. Let's see, I'm going to have to back it off probably about... 15 thousandths. Now yeah, let's go to, let's go to here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go 5.75. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about uh, 10 thousandths at a time. Well, actually, I'm going to cut about 7 thousandths the first week and another 7 and a half the second. That should give me the tolerance that I need. I have to bike it. Eighty. One twenty. One sixty. There's two hundred. Two forty. Two eighty. Three twenty. Three sixty. Uh, let me let me turn this off. I gotta make sure I'm going. I gotta make sure that I'm going five point seven five. So I'll come back on when I'm going there. I'm at three sixty right now. 
Okay, so I'm at 360. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I have never cut aluminum, so I'm not sure what speed you're supposed to do this at. I'm going by the speed that I normally cut brass at, but it's probably the wrong speed. But I did want to have to uh, look it up for such a simple project. So I'm going to go to about about there. That's about where I'm going to stop there. I'm at yeah, I'm at 360 right now. So okay, I'll okay. So now I'm continuing on. So we'll go ahead and bring that back up to speed here. 360. There's 400. The scale goes at 40s. 440. Four eighty five twenty. Uh, I think it was supposed to be five seven five. At five twenty, I've still got to go a little bit more here. Whoa, power outage. Okay. Anyhow, you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning it down here. And uh, we just had a power outage, so I can't do anything on this lathe. Okay, I'll come back on camera once we have power established. Okay, power's back on now. So, just had a little breaker go out. So now I'm just going to go to five, uh, 575. So I'm at 520 right now. Five forty, getting close. Ten. Five sixty. Five seventy. Five seventy five. Okay, so let me just make sure I've got that right. Yep, we're good. Five seventy five. So I've turned this down seven and a half thousandths. Well, actually, it's you have to double that because it's round. So I've turned it down about the fifteen thousandths that I'm going to need. I'm going to mic it out, make sure that we're where we need to be. And it looks like you're at uh, 0.35 ish. So we have the same diameter here now as we did on the old stock. So I'm going to try to press fit it into there. So just give me a second here. I'll try to press fit it in. Okay, so 235, that's what this is, and that's what this is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and it looks like it, it fits right into there. Real tight, but it fits. So that's going to be good enough for that. So I've got this part now, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take a little piece of this shake. I'm going to machine it up here, probably to about here. It's probably going to be about this long. I'm figuring that's how long the original stem was. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to sheet it, okay, and we're going to have a little bit of a shoulder here. I'm going to sheet it up to that point, and then I'm going to have to cut it in half. And I'm going to probably have to use, uh, you know, I've been contemplating. So th this part's machine. It's the fine part. Okay, got to machine it. I'm going to machine it from about here on up. I don't know if you saw that on camera, what I was just saying that. I'm going to cut it off right about here. I'm going to have to cut it in half so that it fits in, so the half round fits into the, uh, into the handle there, okay. Uh, I was contemplating getting a mill earlier in the year, and I, I didn't do it because I didn't think I had that many projects that needed a mill. But apparently, uh, I just came up with a project that could have used a mill just now. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my drill press as a mill. I have a, I have a mill table on it, so I can move it, you know, X and Y coordinates. So I'm going to have to cut this piece using the mill. That's going to be a little bit tricky, and then getting this to drill in is going to be tricky. As I said, I'm going to probably have to, I'm going to have, probably have to build a jig just so I can drill this straight into this and get this little piece, you know, pressed in. But uh, you know, I'll get it done. It's 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 just going to take a, it's just going to be a little bit of a learning curve as to how that's done. So uh, I'm going to cut it. I'm not going to show you me cutting this because uh, there's no sense in doing that. I'm just going to cut it. It's going to be cut, and it's going to be cut off, and it's going to be 
uh, remachined to where it, you know, it's got the nice head on it like that. And then I'll come back on camera showing you the, the final piece before I actually slice that, the, the half shaft. So I'll be back on camera when that happens. Okay, so I've, I've finished machining the piece now. So as you can see, the, the shake on this side is, is, you know, smaller than the middle part. And the shake on this side is, is the same width as this. And I checked it with the, with the hole that I did earlier to make sure that this passed through the hole too. Uh, I, I turned it a little bit too quickly, I think, on this machine. I'm used to doing brass, which needs a higher speed. Aluminum needs a lower speed, apparently, because the ends chafed a little bit. But that's fine. I, I'll just go ahead and probably just uh, bezel that off. But I've got the critical part is I've got the bottom piece here which actually fits in that spring. So the spring does fit right over that bezel so that uh, so that it's, you know, when it plunges down, the spring presses up on it. So that, that was a critical part. Now the uh, trick is going to be, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be flattening this part of it. Uh, I'm going to have to, again, use my drill press as a machine using the uh, using the machine X and Y uh, vise that I have and cut that exactly in half so this is going to be a half shaft on this end so but it look it's looking pretty good so far and when it gets to the other end you know there it's probably about the length that it needs to be if they need to cut it shorter then they can cut it shorter I, I did make it a little bit longer than I thought it needed to be just so they'd have that luxury on that end. So it's turning out okay. And uh, now the, the other trick is going to be drilling into this and getting that, that one piece pressed in here. But, uh, you know, it might not be as big a deal as I think it's going to be. All right, it turned out that I had to machine the entire rod, and I forgot because this piece here is the bottom, so it, it's got to push in from the bottom through to the top. You know, and then that, that little piece is going to be sticking out of here. So that's why I had to machine the whole thing. It looks like it's still a little bit tight towards the middle there. So I have to machine that middle part. It's kind of hard to machine a rod that long. So I'm going to machine it just so it's it's 2.35 here. It's about 2.37 right now. So it's about 2 thousandths over. So I'm going to get that and then it'll, it'll end up being a 2.35 rod all the way through. Okay, so I still have some unfinished business with this. Okay, so here's the old piece. As you can see, the uh, there's a piece of dowel that fits in there. That piece right there is one point uh, is actually point one one eight. So I'm going to take the new shaft and drill right here at the bottom because this is the bottom part. That's the part that has the recess for the spring. Okay. I'm going to drill right about there, 1.118. Now, to get this the same, located at the same spot on this, uh, I was able to, well, first of all, I'm going to drill right there, okay? Then that's, that piece is going to press fit into there. But to get it correct, first of all, you, you can't drill a round piece like this. You have to have something to be able to do it. So I just took a piece of hex stock, machined it out, bored this to the diameter of this, to the diameter of this, and I put it in there, and it actually goes to the depth of this mark here. Probably should have got a scratch all to do it, but whatever. Anyway, that's where the hole has to be located. I don't have, well, I probably could scratch that out, but anyway, it doesn't, doesn't have to be exact exact, but it's got to be close. So this is going to enable me to drill a hole in this first, then I'm going to drill a hole in that. So I'll, I'll drill the hole here first, obviously. Piece of hex stock, you know, I can drill on a flat, I just can't drill on a round. So that's what's going to enable me to do that. Now, the unfinished business that I was talking about was... Uh, if you recall, I had to take that stud off. Of I had to, you know, drill through the stud, so it's still left in the valve body. So now I'm just gonna go ahead. You know, now that the head's off of this, this little bolt, I'm just gonna go ahead and unthread this. I wanted to show this part before I went any further because I'm gonna, you know, the some of the next steps that you see is gonna be me machining that. But when I put this back together, I don't want to have the stud back in there. 
So, okay, I've, I've taken the stud out now. So now this is clear of the stud. So that is the valve body for the piece that I'm making. And now the next steps that I'm going to do, I'm going to do on the drill press. So, again, I'm going to drill through this piece of stock first, the exact diameter of that dowel pin. Then I'm going to put this put this piece in here, drill it, then it'll be registered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece of hex stock. I'm going to probably come up with some type of uh, rig to hold this here while I machine half of this flat. So it's going to be a half round piece when it's finished on this end anyway. So I'll come back on camera once I have the drill press set up. Okay, so now I'm at my drill press. Uh, I'm going to drill a hole in that shaft there. So I've inserted it into the, the fixture. I've got the hole drilled right there where I need to go. I need to go uh, 0.15. And, you know, the scale on this, on this drill is not exact. So I'm probably going to have to tape this off maybe to get the depth that I need. The other problem is is that this, this little... Uh, this little vice that I have, or this machinist, this Fox machinist piece, you know, it's it's got very, very deep vices. So I'm going to try to get it towards the top so I can see what I'm doing. Because, you know, if I put it in, in there and let it go to the bottom, it's going to be way down there. And I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So uh, let me figure that out and then I'll come back on camera. All right, so the depth of the uh, the drill is pretty critical here. I had to check this up in this... In this uh, makeshift milling table here okay uh, but the first thing I have to do is drill about halfway into this shank right here so what I'm gonna do is I've got this I've got a, a, a depth gauge you know for my drills so I'm gonna figure out how deep I need to go I know I need to go about 0.15 so I'm gonna put the drill into the hole that's in that in that uh, hex stock and I'm gonna just put the collar around it and then I'm going to measure up about you know 0.15 as close as I can get to it and I'm probably going to have to well I'm going to actually pull the actual piece I'm going to put it right by side right by side here and then I'm going to lock this collar onto the drill because that's about the smartest way I could do it right now I don't have a oh I could I could do it uh, with the end of my calipers that's what I'll do I'll do it with the end of the calipers I'll measure 1.5 I'll lock it out of there so that once it goes down to, I know that it's at the shank right now, so I'll measure it up to drill another 1.5, and when it gets to that point, I'm going to stop drilling, so that gives me the exact depth that I need to have in this uh, piece here, you know, for the, for the part that I'm going to press into there. So I'll come back on camera uh, once I have it, and I hope I got everything while I was talking. Okay, thanks. Just to explain a little bit further what I was talking about. Okay, so the the dial indicator that I had indicates that that little piece that I'm going to press in there goes in 1.5. So I measured 1.5 here. It's actually 1.46 like or 4.7. So, you know, I've got the dial here. This is the, the part that I'm going to actually judge how high up that needs to be from there. So I can't really show that on camera once I get it going, but that's that's how I'm going to judge where the bottom of this collar has to be there so that I can put my stop in the drill so it'll actually, you know, I'll know what I've got to that depth. Okay, so if you, if you look, the collar is set at, uh, you know, 0.15 depth past, you know, I've, I've already drilled into this, obviously, so... The depth of the, the the next drill is going to go one is going to go point one five, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this up in the, in the the drill up in the chuck now, and that's how I'm going to gauge the depth. And I got to get that centered, obviously. So I brought it out so I could measure it with the calipers because it was kind of a kind of awkward. Okay, so the collar's a little bit big for the drill that I that I'm using, but you get the idea there. So now that guy's there. I'm just going to go ahead and get it to that depth. And I'm going to have to look at it from the side here just to see. 
and I'll be able to tell once it touches it that yeah we're at 1.5 okay so that's about all I'm gonna to need to get that piece pressed into there and uh, the drill that I that I did is a little bit uh, smaller than the actual piece so I might have to go up to the next size larger but the, the, the larger drill size is actually uh, two uh, two thousandths of an inch larger and I, I just you know it's not a really super critical fit it doesn't have to be press fit into there but I'd like it to be press fit into there so I'm gonna see if I can press it in with the hole being smaller maybe I can distort it somehow I'm not sure I don't have an in-between drill size because it's actually point one one eight so anyway you get the idea of how it was drilled and, and that's so as far as drilling round stock you know that's about the only way you could do it because try to drill it forget about it you're never going to get that drill to go into a piece of round stock straight you know well you it have to be exactly straight but uh you know getting it to to behave and drill where you want it i mean that's that's tough so that's just a little trick there okay so now i've completed the drilling in the side of the shake there so here's the shake okay uh it's got the hole drilled in it there it is okay now I drilled probably, oh, I would say probably a hundredth too deep because it was actually supposed to be buried up to here. But it's okay. I I, I figured it out, you know, uh, in the piece, and so it actually fits in there. Now it's a little bit looser because I had to go up to. Let me see here. I had to go up to 0.120 instead of getting that perfect. What was the? I said it was 116, but that's fine. And it actually still stops so here's where it goes in the piece here okay let me uh, let me just insert this okay so you can see how it actually you know stops the piece it falls into the slots where it should there's one slot push down on the knob that's the actual shut off right there okay so to, to turn the knob on you have to, that's the reason you have to push down on these knobs. You turn it. The first slot, I believe, is is the low heat setting. I think that's what that is. And then you push it in again, and then you'll get the high heat setting. So everything's good now. And it's got the little it's got the little tapered part for the spring to go in there. Okay, so now I can put this back on there. But before I do that, I'm going to have to flatten this. Okay, so I figured it out. Um, I went back through some old video and the side that's flattened is, is actually this side of the uh, of the shake. That's where the knob fits on. So I'm going to flatten that side here, probably starting about here and then go on up. And then, you know, it'll have the, this, the size of this is questionable because I don't actually have uh, another piece as a sample to guess. So on the other end, they're going to have to cut this down once they get it. But... Uh, that's what we got okay so I was originally going to use my drill press as a billing machine because I had that that billing table that add-on billing table but I realized that there is no way that I could lock the drill press into a single you know downward position and keep it milling across the surface so that's kind of out of the question I, I had XY coordinates but I didn't have a Z coordinate so what I did instead was I decided to use my my lathe. Uh, luckily, you know I have I have a piece here that is uh, this is a boring bar. this holds a boring bar. So what I did was I clamped the piece in here, and I'm hoping that this is rigid enough to stand up to cutting. You know I mounted the cutter into the lathe chuck, and then I I've actually you know secured this. And what I'm going to do uh, the hole is. By the way, the hole is in pointing in that direction, so it's on the exact opposite of where the cut's going to be made. What I'm hoping to do is to be able to mill across this piece right here to where I can get it to half round. Now, this 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 uh, cutter that I have is not exactly the diameter of the piece that I'm cutting, so I'm going to have to make two swipes at it. So, you know, it's already a messy affair as it is because I have to do it on a lathe. Now I have to do two swipes each time, and uh, I, I set the height here, okay, 
to cut half of this the first time and then I'm going to reset the height and cut the other half the second time and hopefully I'm going to be able to successfully cut this in half to about probably to about there I would say that will be deep enough or maybe even less deep but anyway that's that's the plan so I'm hoping to get the half round this is the last cut on this piece and I'm just hoping that you know I didn't put all this time into something for something that I can't do and it would have helped to have a bill and you know I'd consider getting a bill for uh, last year I considered getting a bill and I thought well what am I going to use a bill for you know but this is one of those operations that you know using a bill is, is imperative but uh, since I don't have a bill and since I can't get one on short notice this is what I'm going to try to do so just bear with me while I try to make the cut okay so I'm guessing that since I'm going to do, be doing a milling operation as I you know, do this, controlling the speed is going to be very important, so I'm going to probably put this on about, uh, I would say, 400, 350, 400 RPM, just because it's cutting aluminum, so, uh, as you know, we discovered that the last time around here where we cut something, so I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing up, just a very, very slow cut, basically, okay, I'm going to crank it in a little bit. Get it to, I guess I'll go about there. And then I'm going to just go ahead and start making the swipe. Well, it seems to be doing the job. I'm going to go to about my depth here, and this is just kind of guesswork as to how deep I actually need to go. I'm going to go to about there. So now just to show you what I have. actually flattened I've actually flattened that round stock okay so I'm going to make another cut now so I'll cut about another I guess I'll probably cut about another 10 that's 10 thousandths by the way I'm going to stop at about the same spot. But it's actually it's actually going okay. Just want to take it nice and slow. That's about it right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna now I'm gonna raise it a little bit. About as high as it goes. Ooh. Well let me lock it down. See what I can get. I, I have a, I have a problem because I think I'm at the maximum point that I can. Oh no, no, I, I got, I got more I can raise it to. Okay, so I'm gonna raise a little bit more here. Raise it to about here, and then I'm just gonna lock it in. So now I'm gonna make another sweep across. It looks like it's actually, oh no, it is cutting, okay. There was just a little bit that wasn't cut. So now I'm cutting that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take another tin. All right, here we go. I 
as they cut deeper it seems to be a little bit more aggressive as far as the cut that I'm as far as the you know the wobbling and the, the feel of the lathe you kind of get a feeling for these lathes after a bit that's the first time I've ever put a cutting tool in a chuck because you know that's not what you do this is a lathe the cutting tool is stationary and then the the work spins but you know, again that's that's what I have here I have to work with the limitations of what I have okay so now I'll cut that I'm gonna go ahead and drop it a little bit Drop it some, lock it down, and make another pass. I can feel it biting into the pieces we go along here, so I do want to kind of make this a very slow pass. And I'm going to go till I get get to about halfway. I'm almost I'm almost there. It appears that I got a actually have to lift it up a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and bring it back over here where it's out of harm's way I'm going to lift up a little bit more I wanted to cut more to about right to about there I must have cut down the middle the first time Good thing a little bit of a soft, otherwise, this would be not doable. I was originally going to try to do this piece of brass, but getting brass stock the right diameter was a real challenge. So now I'm going to go ahead and do another, I'm going to take it another 10 here. Actually, I have to hold this axis because I think it's vibrating itself away from the cut. So I'll go ahead and hold that axis while I'm cutting this. Okay, so now I'm going to loosen it up again, drop it down some. Yeah, that'll be about right. And then I'm going to go ahead and sweep across again. Yeah, you can, you can really feel that that top bit bite. I think I probably will start my cuts on the top and end them on the bottom because it seems to go smoother when I do that. Instead of getting the last little bit on the top, it, it seems to be catching the piece when I start from there, so I don't want to I don't want to do anything that's going to cause it to, to to grab more aggressively than it is already. Okay. I'm 
I'll go ahead and shut it off here. Now, what you might not be able to see from there is that it's actually turning into a half round piece of stock. There it is right there. So, I just want to kind of get a shot from the top here. If I could, should be wearing these keys while I'm doing this, while I'm working this lathe. All right, so that's, that's where we're at right there. So I'm almost halfway. So now I would say, I'm gonna probably take a cut of about five, and then that, that should do it. I'm gonna come back on camera once I got this piece out of the chuck here. But you can kind of see how this is actually, you know, working almost like a billing machine. It's, uh, it's remarkable. Okay, so it appears that uh, the experiment was successful. So what I have is a little, a little piece here. Here's the, you know, here's the tag that uh, gives me the positions for the stop. And then here's the half cut, the half cut piece. Okay, so it's a half shaft because, you know, when you put the handles on there, it's always go it always goes half shaft. So uh, hopefully that's going to work for this person. Uh, I, like I said, I wasn't quite sure how long this had to be because I didn't have that input. So I'm just kind of winging it here. But that's what I came up with. I'm going to put it all back together and I'll give you a final beauty shot once it's back together. Okay, so here's the final assembly. Uh, so you have the, uh, you know, the half shaft right here. That's where the knob goes on. You got the little, this, this part here is actually the uh, part for the electronic ignition on the stove. That's the jet. It goes up into the burner, okay? And then that's where the gas comes in for you know the gas valve and that's the gas valve itself so where the bottom part is the gas valve tops where the knob goes so you've got uh, something that that turns there okay that's that's the way it goes this is full on and then it actually clicks on i i believe it clicks on uh, the low setting i think that's what the low setting is and then you have to push it on push it down and turn it off and you can't turn it on once it's off unless you push it down so it does clock fully as you can see that's the low flame I can believe it's low flame setting and then that's the uh, full on position so we have a success now the, the one thing I, I failed to do in this was uh, like I said I didn't have an original piece to work with so this clicker here there's probably got to be a notch in this someplace for this clicker to turn off because right now it's constantly on being up against here. The fix for the for the person that's going to get it unless they want me to do another one of these is to actually take it loose from here so that it turns itself off. And then the other ones will, you know, you can get it to click by turning one of the other ones off because they all have these on it. And uh, that's that's it for now. So that's, you know, just kind of a... Uh, I, I'd like to say a quick fix, but it took I put some quite some time into this getting this right So in the, the half shaft, you know, that was a challenge everything about this was a challenge Especially the half shaft because I didn't have a bill. So anyway uh, That's it and I hope you learned something and uh, thanks for watching